Let's Doppler. Today we're going to explore arteries on spectral Doppler ultrasound. An artery carries oxygenated blood from the heart to the rest of the body. A normal artery is pulsatile. The flow accelerates and decelerates in response to cardiac contraction. You can visualize an artery pulsating on the ultrasound image. Arterial walls are firm and non-compressible. Arteries have three basic flow patterns, dependent on their location in the body and the structures that they supply. And these are triphasic, biphasic, and monophasic. Arterial flow is generally above the baseline. An arterial waveform is divided into phases, which are tied to the contraction and relaxation phases of the heart, which is systole and diastole. Arterial flow is also either high resistance, low resistance, or mixed resistance. Let's explore a spectral Doppler arterial waveform. At the start of systole, there's a sharp upstroke until you reach peak systolic flow, and then you enter the downslope. On the downslope, there's a dichrotic notch, and this is the end of systole and the start of diastole. And then the downslope continues until it goes below the baseline, which represents a reverse area of flow in early diastole. And then the waveform goes above the baseline again for a little bit, representing a small amount of forward flow in end diastole. Note that above the baseline, the flow is towards the transducer, and below the baseline, the flow is away from the transducer. Although it's important to look at the velocity scale that's on your spectral Doppler map to ensure that positive velocities are set above the baseline and negative velocities are set below the baseline so that you ensure that your spectral waveform map is not inverted. You can see that the waveform is divided into systole and diastole. There's also an area called the spectral window. When this area is open and clear on the ultrasound, then the flow is not turbulent. When this area is filled in, it's a sign of turbulence. Let's talk resistance. Arterial resistance. Resistance is factors that impede or slow the blood flow. And it's the resistance that the blood experiences as it travels through the vessels. Arteries can change their resistance to divert flow towards areas in the body that need it most. And arteries will display either high resistance or low resistance patterns of flow. First, let's talk high resistance. High resistance flow is a more pulsatile type flow pattern and it's found in extremity arteries and areas that do not need constant blood flow traveling to them. A high resistance pattern has a small diastolic component and an area of flow reversal in diastole. So how do you tell the difference between a high resistance pattern and a low resistance pattern on spectral Doppler? Look at the waveform and find diastole. If there's little to no diastolic flow present, the pattern is a high resistance waveform. If there's a high amount of diastolic flow, the waveform is low resistance. Low resistance flow is for organs that need continuous flow going to them, such as the brain via the internal carotid artery, the kidneys via the renal arteries, the ovaries via the ovarian arteries, and the testicles via the testicular arteries. All of these display a low resistance pattern. With a low resistance flow pattern, the flow is sustained throughout both systole and diastole, which allows a constant source of blood flow. A low resistance pattern has an increased diastolic component. Pulsatility is blood moving through the vessels at a variable velocity, which is dependent on the beat of the heart. So a rhythmic beat, a pulsation. The flow velocity accelerates and decelerates as a result of cardiac contractions. And this is a normal flow pattern for arteries. Pulsatility looks at the maximum systolic, minimum diastolic, and the mean velocity magnitudes. And as diastolic flow increases, pulsatility decreases. 
First, let's talk about arterial pulsatility. As a general rule, arteries should be pulsatile. A high pulsatility pattern has little to no diastolic flow, has steep slopes, higher velocity flows, and sharp systolic peaks. A low pulsatility pattern has higher diastolic flow, shallow slopes, lower velocity flow, and broad systolic peaks. Venous pulsatility is a bit different. Normal veins are non-pulsatile. They're phasic, and phasic means that the flow accelerates and decelerates in response to respiration. Although veins that are located very near the heart can display a pulsatile pattern. On spectral Doppler ultrasound, a venous high pulsatility signal will show sharp peaks, which are pointed peaks where a lower pulsatile venous signal will display rounded peaks. For veins, it's normal to have a lower pulsatility pattern with rounded peaks, unless it's a vein that's located near the heart, in which case you'll see the sharp pointed peaks. There's three flow patterns for arteries on spectral Doppler, triphasic, biphasic, and monophasic. First, let's talk about triphasic arterial flow. With triphasic arterial flow, there's rapid anagrade flow in systole, a reversal of flow in early diastole, where the flow travels below the baseline, and then slow anagrade flow in late diastole, where the flow returns up above the baseline. This is a normal, high resistance flow pattern, which we commonly see in extremity arteries. The next type of arterial waveform is known as biphasic flow. Biphasic arterial flow loses its late diastolic flow components. It's missing that late diastolic forward flow. There's rapid anagrade flow in systole, a reversal of flow below the baseline in early diastole, and then Doppler silence in late systole. So the waveform does not come back up above the baseline in late diastole. Our third arterial spectral Doppler waveform is known as monophasic flow. With monophasic flow, there's rapid anagrade flow in systole and slow anagrade flow in diastole. Usually, there's low velocity flow, rounded peaks, and turbulence with this type of waveform. Flow stays on one side of the baseline, no reversal of flow in early diastole. Monophasic flow is a low resistance pattern of blood flow. Ready for more ultrasound videos? Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and tune in on Wednesdays for more videos.